Welcome into the XMLS Sportscast on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the Kansas City Chiefs miraculous win over the Carolina Panthers last Sunday. We're also going to be talking about Northwest dominant victory once again. And we're going to give our thoughts so far about this NBA season. That's all coming up right here on the XMLS Sportscast. And that started off for the Chiefs as they come back from 17-3 down in the sec in the in the end of the first half to win it 20 to 17. The final score 17 unanswered in the fourth, including that miraculous touchdown by Eric Berry and a huge fumble, strip fumble by Marcus Peters at the end of the game. And now the Chiefs have won five straight. They are now at the top of the division with the Raiders on a bye at seven. And two, and that was one of the best games of the year. And it was without Jamal Charles. It was without uh, Jeremy Macklin. Tyreek Hill really stepped up uh, when we needed him to. He, he didn't score a touchdown, but, I mean, he had 10 receptions, 89 yards. He became uh, a big part of the offense when we, like I said, needed somebody to step up. I expected Travis Kelsey to get more involved in the past game, but that didn't happen. Maybe it'll happen next week. Albert Wilson, you know, uh, four receptions, 25 yards. He's been that guy all year. Um I've been waiting all year for Chris Conley to break out. I thought this was his year, but overall a great game, but I'm looking for more people than just Tyreek Hill to step up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I thought our defense played incredible. Our defense has been making big plays when it counts all year long, and that's we, we would not be 7-2 and two if it weren't for that. Uh, like you said, Tyreek Hill played incredible. Our run game was decent enough, but I got to say Alex Smith almost blew that game for us. Uh, he had two two touchdowns that he should have thrown, one to Connolly in the corner of the end zone and one to Kelsey that he just missed. Uh, but in the end, our defense was able to really really help us out. And uh, like you said, I, I also look for some of these, these playmakers to step up uh, as we're uh, the, our last six, how many games? Five games. Uh, they're going to be, we have some tough games coming up. My Packers lost. <laughs> yeah, that's all you care about. They <laughs> got they didn't just lose. They got destroyed by Tennessee. The, yeah, it, they it got destroyed pretty. by Tennessee. By Tennessee. Oh, my Tennessee. goodness. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, well, when you look at the Chiefs game against the Panthers, where do you start the highlight reel? Oh, my goodness. There was a lot of them. Well, you have uh, Marcus Peters stripping Kelvin Benjamin. Holy yeah, that crap. Was crazy. You had interception. You had interceptions here and there. and the wow. double spin move by Eric Berry. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh that, yeah. That was impressive, and uh, I mean the the game winning field goal field goal with Cairo. Um, Cam Newton just plowing through five yards of Chiefs defenders and, mm -hmm. scoring and he's the not touchdown. even dead yet. Cam Newton's no. still alive. Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> Cam Newton, he's been a force all year. He's going to continue to be a force. He obviously hasn't lived up to that that standard of last year, how good he was. But I mean, you got to give it to the guy. Dude's been through. Some of the hits that we'll never ever take in our lives, and he's sure. had five, six, seven of them already. So, but you yeah. can't keep coming back from behind. I realize it's a great Agreed. win, but your offense has to step up, even when your defense is not. And 42 yards for a field goal in the first quarter, four yards from Newton, uh, 38 yards to Devin Funches, and then a Santos field goal. That's 17 3. You can't come back every single game with this team especially with the Broncos come up that game got moved to Sunday night and we've been off one prime time in recent years you can't keep coming back and expect to win every time well that that's the style of uh, that Andy Reid and his team has, style, has implemented they're trying to get all these turnovers and that, I mean that's what we leave the lead the league and uh, turnovers and interceptions I believe I think um, Marcus Peters still leads if not he's tied uh, but uh, you know that's that's the whole game plan. They're trying to get as many turnovers. But well, you can't win the Super Bowl with like just that. one side. Of exactly, all exactly. You like you know, that's not going to happen every single game. And that's why we've lost two games. And I think is why we're going to lose another game, maybe two, three coming up. So we we definitely need to get some wide receivers back. We need to get Jeremy Macklin going. He hasn't really done much at all. 
And then the, there are those fans out there saying, put Nick Foles in. No, yeah, no, no, deep, no, 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 <laughs> no. He's going to get that, that. I realized he was good, but who was that game against the Jaguars? Yeah. yeah no, he wasn't no. very good against no. the Jaguars. Well, yeah. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. All right, coming up, Bearcat football. Once again, another week, another win, another blowout as they clinched the number one seed in that selection show. And we will be hopefully here at the end of the year raising that national championship. We'll discuss more next. Three and the number one seed there goes to Northwest Missouri State. The defending national champions captured the 28th MIA title with a 44-3 route of Missouri Western on Saturday. No surprise here to see the Bearcats in the field tied for the most NCAA playoff appearances at 21. This season, the Bearcats' perfect 11-0 season. They won a school record now 26 straight games. And Bearcats seniors have gone 42-1 and in MIA games in the last four years. They Back here on the x 6 Sportscast right here on YouTube. As you just heard, the Bearcats number one overall in the selection show. And they will face the winners of either Emporia State, that is two weeks from today, Emporia State or Minnesota Duluth. Both are coming into that game 10-1. and one. We have a week off. As you just heard, the seniors have gone 42-1 and one in their careers as Bearcats. Uh, last week's game, that wasn't even close, was it? 44-3 on senior day over Missouri Western. It wasn't even close, guys. It, again, another route. No, and I, honestly, we didn't expect it to be close. Um, the only threat that we were really worried about was Josh Caldwell, the crazy good running back from Missouri Western. He almost got to that that 100-yard mark, but he, he 26 attempts, 92 yards, no touchdown. He had a long of 23, but all in all, averaged about 3.5 yards a carry against our scary defensive front and going in I think we knew that we were going to go in handle handle whatever they had to bring us and go into that bye week yeah our defense has been incredible stopping the run all year long and what Mo West had to give was the run they, they their passing game has been terrible all year our passing defense is incredible too but uh and so I mean I they just could not do anything uh offensively our defense showed up huge we were able to run the football we were able to pass the football. It was just a complete route, and I think it was a it was a good uh, good ending the season in the, the regular season on a good note. Oh yeah, um, as far as going off on our defense and how we basically shut their offense down, uh, Missouri West, uh, sorry, yeah, Mo West only had three first downs in the first half, and they only had 110 yards of total <laughs> offense. Uh, and in this in the second quarter, uh, Bearcats scored on them in five seconds with a. Uh, just a quick two-yard pass from Zimmerman to uh, Cameron Wilcox. So we we shut them down, and we were able to we were able to score. And uh, what what was their total like uh, possession time? I think not it was, much. It, no, not it much. was not a, at all. I'm not unable to find that. Because me and Jace did the pregame halftime show. We looked at the play by at the time possession. It was like 19-10, and somehow it was already 17-3. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was not well, well, I said not much, but they had more possession time than we did. They yeah. had uh, the ball yeah, thirty-one minutes, forty-four seconds. We had it twenty-eight, sixteen. Yeah, seconds, I, was, so. I, I saw that. Like, I think we, uh, I knew that we uh, had the ball less than they did, but still, they were not able to yeah. do anything with it because their defense was just so good. Mm-hmm. And they had to stick. They've had to stick to running the football all year because their passing game uh, ha- hasn't been effective really in the least bit. And so whenever you run the football, that's going to take a lot of time off the clock. Yeah, and just to get an idea of how ineffective their passing game actually was, um, Corey Bertini, he had nine completions on 26 attempts for 104 yards and interception. He was sacked six times. Six times, yeah. crazy. So, I mean, just a, just an all-out, just dominating performance by the Bearcats, which we've come to see week in and week out. And their uh, Josh Caldwell, their running back, actually – he wasn't much good for them. He did get 99 yards, but on he got 99 yards on 26 attempts with a loss of seven. But uh, Phil Jackson got 112 yards on 10 attempts with only a loss of four. Mm-hmm. It just shows you how dominating our, our defense can be compared to you know a team like Missouri Western or hell. any team. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. That game will be in two weeks, November 26th at 1 o'clock. That will be here at Bearcat Field. Uh, students will have to pay for tickets, unfortunately, because it's a playoff game. But, of course, we do that every year, so it shouldn't really matter. Coming up, the NBA season tipped off a couple weeks ago. We give our thoughts next on the X-106 Sportscast. Welcome back to the X106 Sports Cash right here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Uh, NBA time. We're going to talk about the surprising teams in the NBA so far. Um, I don't want to talk about my team because that's the Thunder, and we've just lost four straight. So I'm just going to remove them from the picture. Um, how about the Lakers, man? The Lakers have been pretty good, 7-5 and five in an Amer- uh Huge win over Golden State. Uh, they just beat Brooklyn 125-118 at the time of this recording. Um, they got the Spurs next, but that's kind of worrisome. But you look at these young guys, Ingram, uh, Dane, Clarkson, Calderon, I mean, Nick Young. These guys are s- – Russell, they're built for the future. They can go the distance. They can make the playoffs this year. That, that's true. I mean, they're sitting at number seven now. and I mean, D'Angelo Russell is definitely going to be – the leader in this you know next one or two years you got to give Brandon Ingram a little bit time to grow he did just replace Kobe I mean Mm. (laughs) and uh, head coach Luke Walton coming over from the Warriors I mean he knew what he was doing there being under Steve Kerr and and I'll tell you what Luke Walton he's probably one of the most bright coaches that we have in the NBA now and uh, one one surprising team for me is the Minnesota Timberwolves I expected them to be you know they're sitting at three and seven now I expected them to be you know flipping that over around seven and three with Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, uh, you got uh, Chris Dunn in there now, Ricky Rubio, and uh, they're like babies. Though. They're and like Gorgie Dang. I'll tell you what, though, it, I, I think they're going to turn it around. I think they're going to be one of the better teams in this uh, Western Conference. Yeah, I, I think as this season goes on, their their chemistry. I think uh, they have a new coach. Uh, yeah, I think I look for the Timberwolves to get better. I think the Lakers, like I, I do, think the Lakers could make the playoffs. I think. Uh, the West is very, very top heavy with about three teams up there at the top. And then, you know, the, those last five spots are kind of going to be open. Uh, the Clippers, I did not expect them to go 10 and 1 thus far. I did think they were going to be good as long as they stay healthy. Uh, and I think they will be good as long as they stay healthy. Uh, and I think they can compete in that Western Conference. Uh, then, as far as the Eastern Conference goes, uh, I'm a Celtics guy, I'm also a Cavs guy. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I think the the Celtics are, are looking okay. I don't think uh, I think people thought that they would jump out to a better start than that, than what they have. I thought the Pacers were going to be a lot better than they were than they're playing right now. So I don't know. I, I think the Cavs are going to have the the easy road to the finals, mm-hmm. like they have you know la- that they did la- the last two years. That's right. I mean, if you're you're looking at obviously there were only what like ten games, ten right, right. games into the season, so you can't really go too in depth about this but you know the Cavs are in that number one spot nine and one I mean next there is the Atlanta Hawks who surprised me as well because I mean Dennis Schroeder and you have Kent Bazemore uh, mm-hmm. Kyle Korver and and the new addition Dwight Howard of course and Paul yeah. Millsap in there it's a it's a good mix of players and I honestly I slept on him this offseason I was just like oh I mean Dwight Howard didn't do too well last year with with the Rockets he's all washed up he's getting old now they lost but now team going back too. to his, yeah yeah exactly yeah. going back to um atlanta you know his hometown he's really showing out and just saying hey i'm back let's let's you know compete this year let's make the playoffs let's actually make a run i'd like to see Cavs hawks in that that eastern conference yeah. final. how about the wizards at two and seven man john wall has to do the everything wizards get worse every year i think y- yeah i mean we at our former head coach scott brooks is over there but they sh- but Tried John Wall, that's at least 20 wins already, don't you, you think? You got to. I, I mean, yeah, but who else you got? You got Bradley Beal. Um, you still got. You still have Gortat down there at center. I, I yep. honestly haven't even been following just because they're they're yeah. two and seven now, and I expected the Sixers to be better. Well, I mean, they're, we're still they're, waiting they're, on Ben they're Simmons. The Sixers. But they're the man. Sixers. You. Joel Embiid has been a bright incredible. spot though. That that Kansas. Yeah. Embiid, Okafor. He's nice. That, no, no, as well. Mm-hmm. Like I said, there are a lot well. of teams in this league that are so young. young yeah. You can't really count them for a playoff this year. You're That's looking right. long term. You're looking three or four years down the road. And for the Eastern Conference, one of those teams has to fill those spots because the East is just not that good. Mm. It's not. And then the Knicks, too. 
the Knicks, you're expecting, you know, Carmelo Anthony and Chris Stapps Porzingis, and now you got, uh, um, what's his name, Derrick Rose, the <laughs> what's glass his name? knees. But, um, oh yeah, that Derrick Rose guy. Yeah, that yeah. guy. You know, you know, I expect him to be better than four and six. Like like we said earlier, I mean, it is early, ten games into the season. You can't expect these guys to be end of the season form and have that chemistry that you expect a, an NBA team to have. But things are looking up for both of these conferences. And we just talked about basketball. Didn't even say a word about the the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> I don't want so. to. I do not. Do no, 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 no. Stop. Stop it. Stop. I'm personally surprised at how how well the Raptors are doing. Yeah, at now seven three. Raptors are great. You know, I've always I've always liked Demar Derozan and Kyle Lowry. They're they're a great combo mm -hmm. at that one and two. Okay, we gotta stop because I feel like Golden State's gonna get in conversation soon. <laughs> uh, that was the XML. So Steph Curry. <laughs> no, no, stop. <laughs> I'm ending it. That was the XML Six Sportscast on YouTube. Make sure you give us a f uh, subscribe to us, a like, a thumbs up. That's the same thing as a like. What am I saying? Uh, share the page with us. Get some more subscribers. We have more views and subscribers. I'm not sure how it's working out, but we do. So uh, share us with your <laughs> friends. Give everybody a follow, a share, a like. Uh, this was Chase Barnes, Evan Brown, Connor Raby. I'm Austin Hall. We will see you next week for the X106 Sportscast.